we have all these abilities, senses, that we don't use. And in fact, when we're sitting in front of a screen like this, we're very busy spending a lot of energy blocking out all of our, many of our senses so that we can focus in a two-dimensional way on this, uh, this screen with the idea that we can go anywhere in the world through the Internet. And in a way, we can. But the problem is that we are blunting our senses. Now, if we are creating environments in schools, in our homes, in which as adults, but also our kids, are spending that much energy blocking out our senses, uh, isn't that the very definition of being less alive? Now, what parent wants their child to be less alive? Who among us really wants to be less alive? Maybe some do, but I, I don't think you do, and I don't. The good news is that a body of evidence has emerged in the last dozen years. Uh, attention deficit disorder, kids, and I presume adults as well, based on the studies of kids who have attention deficit disorder, those symptoms get a lot better with just a little bit of contact with nature, a walk through trees in the woods, it, it, in, a, in an urban park, the symptoms go down. Uh, cognitive functioning increases, creativity increases. Uh, in terms of physical health, adults have been tested on indoor gyms, uh, treadmills in indoor gyms, compared to expending the same amount of energy in green exercise, uh, going outside to garden or to hike. Both groups burning the same number of calories. The people on the treadmill indoors do much better. Their health uh, gets better, their blood pressure, their psychological uh, well-being becomes more, better. But the people who do this outdoors, spending the same number of calories, get even better. Ultimately, this makes great sense because for all of human history and prehistory, uh, human beings in their formative years went outside, spent most of their time developing either playing or working in natural settings. And only in the last few decades has that reversed. As of 2008, more people in the world live in cities than in the countryside. That's a huge moment in human history. That means one of two things. Either human beings will increasingly lose whatever connection they still have to nature, or it means the beginning of a new kind of city in which it's no longer enough to conserve nature. Now we have to create it. As strange as that sounds, when you begin to think about the future of cities, as places rich with nature, they look different. I think when most people conjure up images, if they're asked to conjure up images of the far future, well, not being rational, not sitting down and thinking this through, but just what images pop up first, I think the images that pop up in the, in the minds of most Americans and perhaps most Americans in Europe and elsewhere perhaps, are images that look a lot like Blade Runner and Mad Max, and at best the Hunger Games, at least there's a few trees. Martin Luther King said and demonstrated in many ways that any movement, any culture will fail if it cannot paint a picture of a world that people will want to go to. I, I would ask, has environmentalism been painting that picture? Has journalism, my profession, been painting that picture? Uh, has government been painting that picture? Yes, they talk about a sustainable future, but do they talk about something that is better than that, a beautiful future, a full-of-life future, a nature-rich future?